Good evening. I am Gregory E. Lewis, counsel to Brooklyn Borough President Antonio Reynoso and Brooklyn, Bre Brooklyn Borough President Antonio Reynoso's designee to preside over this public hearing under Section 2-13, subsection B of Title 45 to the rules of the City of New York. This uniform land use review procedure public hearing is being conducted from the Brooklyn Borough Hall courtroom. On the agenda is one application currently under review by the Office of the Brooklyn Borough President. Please note that this hearing is being recorded to comply with the law for transparency. The video will be posted on the Brooklyn Borough President's YouTube channel. Following the applicant's presentation and the question and answer session, members of the public who are in attendance tonight will have the opportunity to testify on the application. Pursuant to those same rules, all comments are limited to three minutes. Members of the public may also submit comments to askreynoso at brooklynbp.nyc.gov for my consideration until Tuesday, November 1st, for the borough president's consideration. Uh, Ms. Gosenfeld, please call the first item and let us begin. Calendar item one, 446-448 Park Avenue rezoning, 210332ZMK210333ZRK. 210 this is an application by the 446-448 Park Realty Corp, pursuant to sections 197C and 201 of the New York City Charter, affecting all or part of 12 tax lots on the southeast and southwest corners of Park and Franklin Avenues. The applicant seeks a zoning map amendment to change the project area from M11 to M14 slash R6A, MX, and a zoning text amendment to establish a coterminous mandatory inclusionary housing area. These actions would enable a six-story residential development with 11 units, including three affordable units pursuant to MIH. Community Board 3 voted to approve this application with conditions on October 3rd, 2022. Uh, would the applicant's representative please state your name for the record and present this application? Please come. Hi, good evening, Mandaya Nadi on behalf of the applicant. I'm joined tonight by Kevin Williams, Equity Environmental, and the uh, applicant, Yoel Horowitz. We're here this evening to present the 446 to 448 Park Avenue rezoning application. Here's a brief project summary of the application. First, we propose a zoning map amendment to rezone all or portions of nine lots on blocks 1898 and 1899 from an M11 zoning district to an M14 R6A zoning district or an MX4. The proposed zoning map amendment will facilitate the development of a six story plus cellar residential building with a total floor area of approximately 11,373 square feet and 3.49 FAR with 11 dwelling units at 446 to 448 Park Avenue, which is lots 37 and 38 on block 1898. We also propose a zoning text amendment to map a mandatory inclusionary housing designated area over the entirety of the project area. The site history of the development site, lots 37 and 38, includes a legal non-conforming three-story plus basement residential building, which was originally built in 1905, but demolished in 2014 due to impaired structural integrity. They are both, both lots are now currently vacant. The proposed development in a snapshot is before you on the screen. Again, it's a six story plus cellar building, 11,373 square feet, 3.49 FAR. The base height at the street wall would be 65 feet and five stories. The sixth floor would set back 15 feet and rise to a total height of 80 feet. There would be 11 total dwelling units 
five one bedrooms, five two bedrooms, and one three bedroom, and three affordable units. The zoning map shows the proposed area to be rezoned circled in the black dotted line. You can see the existing MX4 just to the east of the project area. <clears throat> we propose to extend the MX4 but in, in pair it with an M14 instead of an M12 for a lower parking requirement. The next two slides show the tax maps of both blocks uh, with the project area zoomed in. Uh, this is block 1898. Block, uh, lots 37 and 38 is the proposed development site. It is vacant. To the west of the development site, lot 35, uh, is a three-story multifamily building, legal non-conforming residential building with six units. To the east is a six-story multifamily residential building, which received a BSA variance, and seven, there's seven units in that building. On the eight block 1899, there are five lots in the proposed rezoning area. All lots have legal non-conforming residential use, uh, lot 29, which is at the corner of the block, also has conforming ground floor commercial use as, a one, as well as a one-story uh, conforming commercial establishment. The area map illustrates the land use rationale here to extend the MX zoning district across the project area. M11 districts primarily yield light manufacturing and warehouses on large zoning lots, and this type of development is inconsistent with the small lot sizes and existing uses located within the project area. An M14 is appropriate here, as it will continue to promote commercial uses within the project area, but without the onerous parking requirement of an M12 zoning district to the east, since this is located within the transit zone with good access to transit. The R6A zoning district is appropriate as it will bring all residential uses in the project area into conformance and largely into compliance. It will facilitate the development of the development site with a medium density contextual residential building that is consistent with the scale and character of the surrounding area. Overall, the rezoning will provide for pro productive use of an underutilized property, promote zoning conformance and compliance, and provide for moderate growth with affordable housing in a transit accessible area. The next few slides show some photos of the project area. You can see the vacant site there in the middle of um, the two buildings as the proposed development site. The large building on the corner is the one benefited by a use variance. I'll just page through some of the pictures. And these are the buildings on the adjacent block 1899. The proposed plans follow. This is just a site plan showing the um, proposed footprint of the six-story building in the hatched box. Here are some basic um, illustrative floor plans. The ground floor would have two dwelling units. The second and through fifth floors would each also have two dwelling units and one dwelling unit on the sixth floor. Here's the streetscape elevation, a section, and here are some illustrative renderings showing the proposed building within the context of the block. The last two slides have the, um, near the latest HPD AMIs and affordable monthly rents, but that concludes our presentation and the applicant team is here to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the first question is, what kind of marketing did the property owner do to develop an as-of-right scenario? Well, would you like to answer that? Did you engage in any marketing for an as of right use? Yes. And when you please come, do please uh, state your name for the record just so we can have that. Um, repeat the question, please. 
Sure. Uh, do you please state your name for the record? And then My name is Joel Horowitz. Thank you. And uh, what kind of marketing did the property owner do to develop an as of right scenario? In the M1 district. What they can do right now? Yes, what you can do right now, why that's infeasible. I, I, can, only, I can only build um, M1 zoning, to F, um, I think, to FAR for, for um, 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 M1 zoning. One FAR for manufacturing, for commercial only, and and I can do much more. I can only build for for. I can only build for manufacturing. Did you reach out to anyone Yes, it's it's That's it's it's. Oh, it's financially, it's, 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 it's going to cost me a lot of hardship. Yeah. That's what they're asking. And was, the question's about the, the marketing, the kind of marketing that you did at, to develop an as-of-right scenario, the, the outreach, the marketing. I don't understand the question. They're asking what research you did to find that an as-of-right building was financially infeasible for this. The, financial planners, uh, yeah, fi I, I, financial planners, brokers, everyone. I, 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 I went through, I went through all, all the people, and, and, and to make my decision, it's gonna, if, if I'm, if I'm doing that, it's gonna, co it's, uh, gonna have a financial hardship if I'm, if, I, if I'm, it's keeping M1 zoning. I, I spoke to brokers, to finance, to, to. Uh, I researched a lot of people before I went to that path. Uh, did any of the past boards of standards and appeals, the BSA variances that permitted residential use within the existing M district, mm -hmm. serve as a rationale to substantiate the proposed rezoning? Um, Yes and no. Uh, from a use perspective, there are 14 use variances on Block 1897, 1898, and 1899. Um, but from a uh, bulk perspective, um, there are you know many other buildings, uh, especially in the MX to the wet to the west, not including the one benefited by the variance adjacent to us, but. Uh, across 1899, I'm just going to the area map, um, within the MX4 district that are of six and seven stories. So from a land use rationale perspective, no, it was not just the um, variances that granted use waivers, but also that this building um, fits within the context of the area in terms of bulk. What guarantees that the developer would not circumvent the mandatory inclusionary housing, the MIH obligation, by building fewer than 10 units? Uh, he would also get a uh, lower floor area. Um, so in order to get the full 3.6 FAR, um, he would provide a mandatory inclusionary housing. Uh, here, it would be approximately three units. Um, If approved, how would this rezoning affect adjacent, non-complying residential use at 450 Park Avenue? Um, 450 is lot 35? Yes, that's the corner building in Franklin and Park that was built pursuant to a B BSA variance. It wouldn't affect it at all. Uh, that, that variance would still stand. Uh, the use would be made conforming, but um, the FAR there is actually 4.19. Um, so it would bring it into compliance uh, a bit more, but it wouldn't be fully into compliance, so it would still need, it, the variance would still stand there. Why weren't the adjacent parking lots to the west of the applicant's property uh, included in the rezoning area? Um, I don't, 
I don't remember us um, contemplating including those in our discussions uh, first with the Brooklyn office. Um, we, we typically keep the proposed project area um, as, as small as possible um, for environmental review purposes. So uh, those are uh, many lots that are vacant um, and currently have active manufacturing uses on them. So we did not include them within the project area. Um, they didn't really conform to the land use rationale of what's existing in the project area in terms of non-conforming residential uses in the entirety of the project area that we've chosen. Thank you. Uh, what was the most recent planning effort conducted in this area, and what is the origin of the um, MX-4 district? Sorry. Sorry, can you repeat that? Sure. What was the most recent planning effort conducted in this area, and what is the origin of the MX-4 district? Um, I, I would have to look into when the MX-4 was originally mapped and get back to you on its origin. And the portion of my question about the most recent planning effort conducted in the area? Um, most recent planning effort in terms of like a citywide initiative? Yes. I'll have to get back to you. In your professional opinion, does this rezoning promulgate or ideal planning scenario? Sorry, I was just writing notes on your last question. Sure, no, repeat In your professional opinion, does mm -hmm. the, this, this rezoning promulgate an ideal planning scenario? Yes, we believe it does, um, largely because this would make all residential uses in the project area conforming um, and also complying, except for the one building that you referenced before, benefited by the BSA variance. So we do believe that it has a sound land use rationale. And one final question. Um, was ground floor commercial use ever contemplated as part of this proposal? Lewis? No, it was not. Thank you. Um, so I'll now call on testimony from anyone in attendance uh, who wishes to testify. Is anyone in attendance? I'm seeing that there are none. Hearing no individuals wishing to testify, uh, this Euler public hearing is now closed. The Office of Brooklyn Borough President will review the application, and the Borough President will submit his recommendations to the City Planning Commission, which will hold its hearing at a later date. As a reminder, viewers may submit comments to Ask Reynoso at brooklynbp.nyc.gov for the Brooklyn Borough President's consideration until Tuesday, November 1st to do so. With that, this public hearing is now adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.